In this video today, I'm gonna to go through 18 of the best Serato DJ Pro settings. So I'm currently using Serato DJ Pro 3.0.11. I think 3.0.12 is out now, but I haven't upgraded yet. So what we're gonna do in this video is just go through each of the settings and these are just the best settings for me. Let me go through my laptop right now and I'll show you the specs of this laptop. I'm using Mac OS Catalina 10 15.7. I've got a MacBook Pro 13-inch 2018 with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. It's got 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i5. I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM and the storage is 256 gigabytes. Now, I wish I went for a bigger one, but it is what it is. So we're gonna go back to Serato now. And like I said, these are the best settings for my computer. So the first setting I wanna go through is sort queues and loops chronologically. Now, I never used to have this switched on. So when I used to press my queue points on my, um, on my pads on my DJ software, they used to be everywhere, but now they're sorted out in chronological order. So say, for example, I set a queue point at the start and the middle at the end, they're gonna be in the order. Even if I set a new cue point anywhere, it's always going to be in the order of that. And it's the same with loops as well. So this is just a good way to just know that all the cue points and loops that you've set are in the correct order of how the track is. The next setting I've got is enable hot cues. Now, I don't know any DJ that DJs without hot cues. I feel like every DJ needs hot cues. This just allows you to use the pads on uh, all your DJ equipment. Now, all the DJ controllers these days have um, the eight pads. So they've got the one on the left, one on the right, and you have eight pads where you can trigger your cue points or any of your other things with Serato. So yeah, so I've enabled hot cues switched on. The next setting I've got is show beat jump controls. Now, I have no idea how I would ever get through life without beat jump. Beat jump just allows you to jump a certain amount of bars in a track. So for me, I always have it set to 16 bars. So if I wanna jump back 16 bars, all I gotta do is press back. If I wanna jump forward 16 bars, all I gotta do is just press the forward button. You can change it so it's like eight bars, four bars, two bars, but I always have it at 16 bars. Now, if you don't have show beat jump control switched on, I don't know how you're getting through. Beat jump has really changed my life and changed my DJ. And so you know what? Enable it and let me know in the comments what you think of beat jump. The next setting I have is use auto gain. Now in every single one of my settings videos, I never really know how to explain this, but auto gain pretty much just makes sure that every single track has the same level. If you don't have auto gain switched on, you have to keep playing around with the trim knob. And if you've ever played on USBs, you'll know how frustrating this is because some songs are quieter than others. Some songs are louder than others. So on CDJs and you're, when you're using USBs, you have to adjust the trim so it matches up the volume with the other track. With auto gain, when it analyzes the tracks, it kind of normalizes the track and levels out the track so every single track kind of has the same volume there are going to be some tracks that are quieter than others and louder than others but auto gain does do a really good job in serato dj pro so i have this switched on with with the default setting of 92 db the next setting i have switched on is instant doubles now i have a really bad habit with instant doubles i instant double all the time so basically i'll be playing a track on the left hand side i'll mix the track in on the right hand side then I'll instant double it over to the left hand side so I can get the next track on the right hand side. This is a very bad habit of mine which I, I'm trying to get out of but I'm finding it very very hard. But basically instant double just allows you to double the track over to the other deck. That's literally all it is. Now most DJs play left right, left right, deck one, deck two, deck one, deck two but I literally just play on deck one, deck one, deck one all the time. I bring in this song on deck two but I always flip it back to deck one and this is because I'm just a lot better with scratching on my right hand side and it just allows me to be a lot quicker say for example you're using a DJM 900 Nexus mixer you know how every time you have to change the effects to be on either channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 or channel 4 with instant doubles I never have to change the channel effects ever I can just keep it on one because I'm always on this, the same side but yeah I have instant double switched on it's a really bad habit of mine I do need to get out of it but yeah that's a setting that I have switched on on Serato DJ Pro the next setting I have enabled is play from first cue point now I always just have this switched on I just feel like when you load a track, you should always be at the first cue point. If you don't have this set, it's just gonna start at the start of the track. Playing from first cue point is really good if you're doing routines and you need to be quick. I DJ quite fast, so it's always good for when I load the track that is on the first cue point so I can mix in a lot quicker. So yeah, that's another setting that I have switched on on Serato DJ Pro. Next setting that I have switched on, and this is only gonna apply to Serato DJ Pro free and up, is analyze stems. Now, you can analyze stems beforehand, like you don't have to do it 
on the fly, but I have analyzed stems on the fly switched on, and I'll tell you why. My computer can handle it. My CPU on my computer can handle analyzing stems on the fly. Some computers can't, so some DJs will do their stems analyzation before they start their DJ set. I always do it on the fly. I don't like to analyze my stems beforehand because I don't know what tracks I'm gonna be playing during the set. So when I'm DJing, I always freestyle. I always, always freestyle. So I don't know what stems I'm gonna use. So I have the analyze stems feature switched on so I can use the stems for any single track. I can get the acapella for any track. I can get the instrumental for any track. I can take the drums out for any track. I can do whatever I want and it's all on the fly. Now, if you haven't got a powerful laptop, I do suggest that you turn this off. My laptop can handle it. If you've got the M1, M2 and now the M3, MacBooks, analyzing stems on the fly is gonna be quite straightforward for you on your laptop. So yeah, I have analyzed stems switched on, but like I said, this is only gonna be applied for Serato 3.0 and above. The next setting I have is Simple Sync. Now, there's all this talk about sync. Sync, 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 sync is bad, you shouldn't sync, whatever. I use sync. I don't care, literally. I use sync to speed up my workflow. There's a lot of, there's a, you know what? I don't even wanna get into it. I use sync, who cares, right? So it basically, if the tools are there to help you, the tools are there to help you, you should use them. I know how to beat match by ear. I just do this to speed things up. I DJ very, very fast. If you have seen any of my videos online, if you've ever seen me DJ in person, I DJ very, very fast. So just having the sync button there when I need to do something very, very quick is very, very useful. So yeah, I have simple sync turned on. If we go to the next page now, so the next setting I have under audio is USB buffer size at five milliseconds. Now, I could probably take this down to one millisecond, but the lower you have it, the more strain it has on your, or computer. Five milliseconds, I can do everything that I need to when I'm DJing. I don't feel the need that I need to drop it down. Everything responds quite well, but USB buffer size is pretty much the latency of pressing a button and it registering on the software. When I press a button, it takes five milliseconds to register. If I wanted it to be quicker, I could take it down to two. If I wanted it to be even quicker, I could take it down to one. But I was talking to someone from Serato and they said the difference between one and two is so massive that you shouldn't even really go to one. But yeah, I just have it as five. Everything seems fine for me. I know a lot of DJs, if they have older laptops, they have it at 10 or even 20. But like I said, my laptop can handle it, so I have it at five milliseconds. The next setting I have switched on is include subcrate tracks. Now, I don't actually know why anyone would turn this off because in Serato, I like to have a crate, then a bunch of subcrates underneath it. So say for example, I'll have a warm up crate, then I'll have R&B warm up, hip hop warm up, house warm up, ladies warm up. I like to be able to click the overall warm up folder and have all those tracks. If you have this switched off, you can't see the tracks inside the ladies warm up folder or the R&B warm up folder. I just have it switched on because you say for example, I'm, I'm warming up, I'll be in the overall warm up folder, but then I might wanna go into the R&B folder for a little bit. I might wanna go into the R&B warm up folder for a little bit, so I'll go into there. But then after that, I might think, oh, what direction do I wanna go in next? So I'll go back out to the main warm up folder then I'll see what direction I want to go to then I might want to do house warm-up then I'll go inside the house crate if I have this disabled when I go to the warm-up crate I won't have all my tracks in front of me so yeah I just have this switched on to make my life a lot easier the next setting I have enabled is play tracks color equals blue now the only other options I think are gray and none if you have none, then you're, psych you're a psychopath. I don't know how you can DJ and not have an indicator of what songs you've played next. Gray might be fine, but um, blue just works with me. I think the default is blue and everyone just has blue. So basically, if you've played a track in Serato, it will turn blue. So yeah, I had that setting switched on. And then the setting underneath that, I have reset played tracks on exit. Now, say for example, I do a DJ set. I've played 250 tracks. When I close Serato and open it back up again, all those blue tracks will turn back to normal. Normal. Now, I know a lot of DJs that don't have this setting switched on. They just leave the blue tracks and they just keep them. I don't know how people can actually DJ like that. Now, maybe it's because I have really bad memory. I have very, very bad short-term memory. If I play a song and then a half an hour goes by and it's not blue, I will actually play that song again because I actually can't remember. Some people do have better memory than me. I really need this, um, this switched on because if I open up Serato and everything's blue, I'll start my DJ set and I'm playing. I'm like, have I actually played that song? So yeah, I just, um, every time I close Serato are always reset the blue tracks back to normal. The next setting I have switched on is enable play count. Now I've only recently switched this on and I'll tell you why. So in previous versions of Serato, when this was switched on, when you loaded a track, it would take that extra millisecond to load a track and it was really messing with my workflow. So I had it switched off. But now because of Serato stems and tracks just take that little bit longer to load anyway, I've now enabled it. So the reason why I've switched it on now 
is because at the end of every year, I'm gonna go through my music library and see what tracks I haven't played and I'm gonna take them off my laptop. I really feel like you need to go through your music library every year and start taking out tracks that you just don't play. There's a lot of DJs I've been speaking to on my consultation meetings, the live streams that have like 80,000 tracks, 90,000 tracks. I guarantee if you had the play count and you looked at how many times most of them tracks have been played, you'd probably get rid of 90% of those tracks. I spoke to a DJ once who had 90,000 tracks in his music library and I'll tell you how many tracks he had actually played, 9,000. He could have got rid of that 81,000 tracks and cleaned up his music library. The reason why I've switched on enable play account is just to clean up my music library a lot better. Now, the next setting I have switched on is library text size. Now, at the moment, I have it set at two because I've been organizing my music library. When I organize my music library, I like to have the library text size really small because I want to have all the data in front of me. But when I'm DJing, I do put it up to about four because when you're DJing, you're you're quite tired, your eyes are going to get a bit. So I like to have the, the, the library size a lot bigger just to make it a lot better for me when I'm DJing. Now, I don't know what setting you lot have, but I feel like when you're organizing, you have it as small as possible so you can see everything. But when you're DJing, you have it a lot bigger so you can see everything right in front of you. Next setting I have enabled is EQ colored waveforms. Now, this is just an aesthetic thing. When you take out the lows, mids, and highs, the waveform changes in Serato. It just changes color. Now, a lot of DJs, when they're next to me, they always like, how, how does it change color? Literally, it's just EQ colored waveforms. Switch that on. And when you take out the lows, mids, highs, change them, or whatever, they do change color. So this is just more of an aesthetic thing. Thing. It doesn't actually do much, but it just changes color when you take out the low, mids and highs. Next setting I have is decimal placed uh, set to one. Now, if I had decimal place set to two, I would be there fiddling so much to make sure that it matches. I have not got time for that. So I just have one decimal place just to make my life a lot easier. The next setting I have is maximum screen updates per second. Now it's set to 60, the default is 60. Um, and that just makes Serato perform a lot better. It just basically, it updates the screen 60 times in a second. So everything is a lot smoother. If you take this down to say 15 or 10, Serato will look like it's glitching. I can't deal with that. My Serato needs to be nice and smooth, buttery smooth in order for me to DJ properly. So yeah, I had that setting switched on. And the next setting I have is high res display. Now Serato brought this in, in Serato DJ Pro, cause obviously it was Serato DJ beforehand. So now when they brought in Serato DJ Pro, they brought in this high res screen display. And I feel like if you don't have it, Serato just looks a bit, rigid it looks a bit i don't like it so i switched this on now it does use up a little bit more cpu but not that much and i feel like it just makes serato look a lot better i'm a proper perfectionist with my serato library and how my serato looks and i need to have my serato looking crisp high res and just buttery smooth so i have all these settings switched on just to make sure that my experience in serato dj pro is perfect so that was me going through 18 settings in Serato DJ Pro. Now that you've watched this video, check this video out here.